I'm using um, LEDs for, for hard clipping in this circuit. Um, they're in the diodes um, drop down. Uh, in here, there's uh, that's a big old germanium, uh, like a 1N34A or some of the Russian D9 series. Uh, the only thing with the Russian um, diodes is that the marker is reversed. So um, just keep that in mind. Um, and then this is the DO35 package, which is like your uh, 1N914 or uh, 4148. Um, and different variants there. Same for the DO41, uh, like, you know, your rectifier diodes. Um, so, but I'm going to be using a five millimeter, uh, I'm sorry, breadboarded with anyway, five millimeter uh, LED. Right now I need the other half of this IC. Um, and in this case, it's an inverting setup. So I need to have it come into pin six, which is the negative side. Connect. That's the other thing. If you um, delete that, try that again. If you place a part right and have the pins connect each other right like that, it will automatically make your net for you make those components connected um, so that's a little trick you can grab it and move it out as you need it for spacing now uh, uh, once you've got once you've used a few parts um, and you need to get a new one if you don't feel like copying and pasting, if you, or if you don't really uh, like that workflow, you can click on this little drop down from the add part and uh, it will show you the last few that you have used. Um, I'm going to grab the pot that I used previously, but I don't feel like redoing the mirror and everything if I just copied and pasted that. So I'm just going to grab that and that's another little handy shortcut. Um, as you're laying out your schematic. Now that we have our basic circuit uh, topography laid out, we um, need to go in and tell or deal with the power issue because right now uh, this is great that these are marked, but where are they going to? How are they getting these voltage references? How is this getting 9 volts? I start every power supply section with oops, um, with a battery symbol. Not that we're not that I ever really run pedals off of battery anymore. I use this symbol just to show, hey, in and out, and it has this um, this package that goes along with it for or the footprint uh, that shows the positive and negative. So this is going to connect to ground, and this is going to be where uh, you connect your um, the positive lug of your battery or your um, of your DC jack, um, and uh, my f f uh, preferred method of uh, polarity protection is using um, a Schottky rectifier diode, which would be a, a, a DO41, um, and I'm just going to place that there. Um, connect that up. Uh, and this will connect to ground here in a second. From here, um, signal is protected and we can connect our IC. So this, this point right here will be our nine volt reference. So let me go ahead and copy that and stick that right there and we can connect that up. All right, so, and then this will be ground and that connects to pin four. All right, so the IC is powered. That's good. Now this transistor is getting power. That's good. These are invisibly connected, but because they have the, the, the these markers, they're connected. Um, so we need to make our VA and VB voltage references now. Oh, and some uh, power filtering wouldn't be a bad idea either. So let's add another electrolytic capacitor. 
use one of these big ones for 100 UF and throw that there. Uh, and it's not a bad idea. It's not always necessary, but it's not always bad to have a lower value cap to help filter out any higher frequencies. I usually just use a 100 U, 100 N, 100 N cap. Um, and I've read that it's better to use a ceramic than a film for this application. Uh, I don't know why, but um, it's not a bad place to use a ceramic one since it's not actually in the audio path. Uh, and will make no difference in tone whether you use film or ceramic there. Um, okay, so we got power filtered in, and now we need to do a couple resistor voltage dividers. Um, if you don't know, um, two resistors of the same value will drop your supply voltage in half. So if this is 10K and this is 10K, this will be four and a half volts roughly um, or whatever half of your whatever you're reading here this may not always be nine volts since there's a little bit of voltage drop with um, a shot key not as much as a regular uh, rectifier diode like a 1N4001 but um, still a little bit so it might be not exactly four and a half but close uh, in this case I'm doing um, two different values to get a um, a specific voltage which I don't remember the actual voltage off the top of my head and I didn't write it down on my handwritten schematic so you'll just have to trust me here um, all right now we need to oh this is a handy tool as well this is the group tool um, and if you hit escape if you have another one selected and you hit escape on your keyboard it will automatically go to the group I don't really know why but that's just how it works um, so we're going to group these three components and you just select them and then go back to the move tool right click and click move group and then we can move it around as we need um, and i'm just going to make this whole thing just a little bigger and the group tool helps when you have a bunch of things you need to move around instead of uh, manually doing each and every one which gets really slow and painful there we go, that looks better. Now this is our VA reference point. So we'll copy that, slap that there, and connect it. Yes. So now that will connect to here. Um, and we're running out of room, so I'm gonna grab this whole thing and move it. And then because we haven't labeled anything or put the values of anything yet, and we need another one that is a normal um, half voltage uh, divider. We're going to copy this or group it and then copy group and paste. Now, if you paste something like these net lines and there's a dot on all these, it's a junction and it doesn't create one when you paste it, there's a junction button. You can come over here just below the net button, click that add a junction and it'll say connect these net segments and we'll say you betcha uh, and then uh, this isn't going to be VA this is VB so we can delete that uh, and copy VB and now these three VB connections are actually connected to something and now we can connect this to power yes and we're good so that's our power supply, although we do need to mark that this goes to ground so it connects to these. Now, I um, there's probably a better way to do this, but it's just the way I've been doing it for so long now. Uh, I have a couple ground pads, just like how I have the in pad that's a label as well as connected to a, a physical pad. Um, I have the one that's not connected to a physical pad and then two that are one square, one's round. Um, so I'm going to use the round one. These will still connect to these. They're just because it's ground pad round. It's still the ground net. It's going to connect all of our ground pads. And the reason I'm using a pad is because, hey, you need to connect your 
the ground of your circuit board to the ground of your jacks and, and your switch, etc. So that's connected. We've got this labeled as 9 volts. This is grounded. Everything is looking pretty good. Now we go back and click the value tool over here and label everything according to uh, the schematic that we're going off of. And a little tip, if you're having problems like clicking, you can't, it's not bringing it up there. It's hard to see, but there are little tiny crosses that is the anchor point, origin point. I'm not sure what exactly you'd call it. Uh, you can see it a little bit in the names here. Um, but that's where you need to aim your cursor and that will bring up the thing. Sometimes it's not exactly in the center and you kind of just kind of have to click for it or zoom in and, and find it. And going along with that, if you have um, a label or a name or something that's in a weird spot and you don't want it to be there or you just want to rearrange it like, oh, this one is sideways, that looks weird. You can click the little, again, the little cross there and move it around wherever you see fit and you can see it has a little line connecting it back to what part it is. So I don't suggest moving C3's label way over here because that doesn't make sense. But if you were to accidentally do that, you could easily see where it, what part it actually goes with. Some parts are not going to have a, a definable value that you can do. You can click yes and do it anyway, um, and but you don't always have to. Sometimes it's pretty self-explanatory. Oh, this is an LED. I'm doing it on this one, so uh, I know that it is a red LED, and it's not going to show it because it's not how that component is is set up. But if I ever need to know, it's there. If I I can go in with the info tool, click on it. It'll show me, oh, this is D2, D2, it's an LED, and the value is red LED. I'm also going to go in and rename my pots to what they actually are doing. So in this case, this is the volume, and this is gain. And for the sake of being thorough, I'm going to go ahead, if you have a part like this that isn't labeled, um, doesn't have a label like these do, you can, um, we already we did already name it as B, um, but we can add some text. Um, that'll bring up what text you want. Note that hitting enter will just, is basically the same as hitting OK. So if you need to have two lines, it says here at the bottom, shift enter to add a new line. So just take note of that. Oh, and I, this is going to be default on the nets layer, which is this green layer. And this is a name. It doesn't need to be a net on the net layer. So I'm going to change that to layer 95 names. And there we go. That's now labeled as B for the buffer out. Um, and if you think, oh, I want to change that, um, you can hit the info button, click on that, and change it to buff, buffer out. That way that's labeled and it's a little more clear of what that pin is doing. All right, so that's looking pretty good. Um, we also need to add real quick. Um, I like to have my on off LED indicator built into the board most of the time. Um, that way it's or at least the current limiting resistor. Um, so it's just a little easier to build. You don't have anything floating or um, trying to cram it in somewhere else. So to do that, we are going to copy um, a resistor. And this one's 4.7k um, already, which is great. And there's a couple of places you could put this. You need to connect it to voltage, obviously. Uh, you could connect it right over here. Um, 
straight off before the power pol uh, the polarity protection diode. Um, that's a good place to put it, but if it doesn't always work um, to put it here, um, you can put it further down the line on the nine volt rail. Um, it's really not going to be that uh, major of a difference. Um, I'm going to rename R19 to CLR because um, different uh, LEDs um, sometimes you need to adjust this value um, depending on what type of LED you're using. And this needs to connect to a pad that then can be connected to your foot switch so that you can, it doesn't need to go straight to ground because that'll just leave it on all the time. So you want this foot switch to connect it to ground. So we need to have a pad for that. And I have LED plus, which is if you're going to have your LED not mounted to your board or an LED minus, which is going to be, if it is going to be board, mount, board mounted, which is what we're going to try to do here. So we're going to connect that. Got the L minus pad. I think I'm still gonna have to name this. Yeah, um, your library is always a little bit of a work in progress. I'm gonna just change the, even though we have other LEDs and it's obviously their LEDs, they're being used as clipping diodes and this is being used as a light. So I'm just gonna tell it to to call it LED. All right, a couple um, real quick, a couple user interface um, tools. Um, I mean, the scroll zoom is, is very handy. It's based on where your mouse is pointed and where it will zoom in. Up here, though, you can manually click zoom in and zoom out. Uh, this will zoom to fit, so it'll center it and fill the screen. Um, and this is zoom select, so you can say, I just want to look at this part. Bam, you're there, and then you can pop back out to fit. Um, you know, undo is up here, stop, that's any function or code you might be running up here. We're not really going to get into that. Um, uh, LT Spice is integrated into Eagle now. Um, and that's not something I've ever really played with. Um, so don't ask me how that works. I don't know. Um, but uh, I'm sure there's other tutorials out there that go over the basics of, of using LT Spice. It's just not something I've ever had time or really looked into. I've just um, either prayed that it, whatever I was laying out worked or um, had breadboarded it before and generally breadboarding it. Um, so this is, this is looking pretty good. The only thing now left to do is to really just to double go look over it, double check it based off the schematic that you're copying from. Now all that's left is putting a, a name on it and you can do that with the text tool again. Um, and up here is, uh, some modifiers for, um, the size and thickness and the font. So I'm going to call this the Jetpack Overdrive because there's something on my desk that says Jetpack and it seems like a pretty decent name. Uh, and I'm going to make this text uh, a lot bigger. Throw that right here. Go back to I think 0.07 is the default. If you hit escape, it'll take you right back into it and you can make another text layer. And here you can mess with the alignments, whether it's dead center, center aligned to the bottom of the text, or bottom right, bottom left, etc. There. And at this point, it's probably a good idea to save your work. Uh, I'll let you figure out where you're going to save that. But it's just like the normal um, file, file save as type of stuff, and you can save it where you need to on your computer, what makes sense to you. Um, so there, that's that's the basics of, of schematic generation. Um, hopefully that's making sense. And in the next one, we'll look at um, how we transfer all this into a an actual PCB and a board layout. Jeez.